we're about 20 kilometers upstream of Head of Tide, um, which is where the Severn Estuary finally runs out and, and enters into the freshwater River Severn. So the shad arrive here in around about May. So um, they come, they, they enter the estuary around about uh, mid-April. They use the tidal cycle and the moon phase to, to migrate upstream and eventually they'll arrive here in May. Um, so the, sh the shad or the twait shad is a member of the herring family. Um, so unlike the herrings that we know um, from fishmongers, um, the twait shad chooses to come and spawn in fresh water um, to, to eke out its existence, to get out of the harsh environment of the sea and to lay its eggs um, in fresh water and get a bit of a, a gain uh, on the other sea fish by doing so. So it is still very much a sea fish. It comes in, as I said, um, in April and May and only spends about 30 days in fresh water before it actually returns to the sea post-spawning. So we know from our tracking results that they move up river in, in shoals and they move in uh, a few, a little bit of distance every, every night. And if the water temperature gets to about 16 degrees, they are um, stimulated to spawn. What they do is they release a few eggs every night. So it isn't the case like a salmon which releases all its eggs in one go. What they'll do is they will release a few the first night and then move on to the second night. And as conditions remain favorable, they'll pair up each evening and do what's called a kind of shad dance. The male will, will swim around the female as she releases her eggs and fertilize those eggs. Um, now, not many people see this event because for security reasons for the, for the shad themselves and to make them safe, they do it predominantly at night on the River Severn. The peak time is about 1.30 in the morning, so you have to get out and, and look out for them on, on good nights, good still nights in, in May if you want to. Well, you can see them if it's a bright night, but mainly you'll hear them. They give a very distinctive sound as the male circulates around the female, um, which is called a bull event. And you can actually record these and listen to them. And then you can work out how many shad are actually spawning in any reach at any point of the, of the night. And once they're spawned, they'll turn tail and they will actually go downstream very fast uh, and back out to sea because they, they, there is no, it, it's a dangerous environment for the river. It's very different to the sea. Now the shad is an amazing fish because what it does is it comes back on the River Severn up to five times. So it's really important that our shad get back out to sea. So they go back out to sea, they feed until about November in the inner estuary and then from our tracking data we know they leave the estuary and go out into the wider sea before returning the following April. But historically the shad used to go all the way up through England and then across into the Wales and the Welsh borders above Shrewsbury and to Welshpool. Now they haven't been able to do that um, for the last 170 years since the weir behind me was built. This basically blocks them. And the reason it blocks them is because although there's plenty of water coming over the crest, shad are unable to jump. Unlike a salmon that would approach that weir, possibly take two or three attempts to jump it, swim up it and jump it. Um, shad don't do that. They are fantastic swimmers, but no, they're no good at jumping. So the velocity of water coming over that weir crest is just too great for them to swim up. So they've been confined to the lower river here from Worcester downstream for the last 170 years. Our hope is um, that when these fish passes are all complete, um, the four in this lowland section will then allow the shad to return all the way up to the Welsh borders to continue their spawning. You need a little bit of imagination at the moment, but you can see behind me the sheet piling of where the fish pass entrance is going to be. And we'll hear more about that later, about how fish passes work. But the fish will approach up this side, following the strong current, enter the fish pass and should pass easily upstream to before they go on to the next three navigation weirs and then hopefully onward to spawn up in the Welsh borders.